I just remember like looking in the mirror and being like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I was so done. I was like, either at this point, I'm going to end up like dying because I like hated myself that much or like I need to finally be willing to do AA and like give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll die. But I finally had a moment of like, I need to actually try this because I never really tried it. This is funny because everyone that says that we talk the same and sound the same. Really? That we Dude. talk the same? Yeah, like we Who say says the same. That? We have like the same mannerisms and the way we speak. A lot of my friends say that when they listen to. Well, like I laugh like you. Yeah, like, Anytime someone makes fun of my laugh, I'm like, that was all mouth. But like even our voices sound similar. So maybe people won't be able to tell us apart. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mally. Hi. So we want to tell Mally's story, <laughs> but we're scared our parents are listening. That would actually be horrible. <laughs> it's like, what is a cam artist? Um, so this is something that I've never told J- Jenny. Um, what is that? There's a few things I've never told Jenny. Should we go in chronological order? Yeah. Okay. Let's just start with telling your story, like as if we were at an AA meeting. Like people don't, obviously people know like my sister's an addict and yeah. like. Recovering addict. Recovering addict. <laughs> Just, like, correct me along the way. Okay. But I've obviously never told your story. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but people literally DM me and say, like, it would be such a good podcast if your sister came on, like, anytime I mention you. Really? Yeah. Okay. And also, thank you, because there's a lot of stuff in our family that, as you know, like, we can't really talk about. Do you know what I – like, there's just a lot I can't say. So the fact that you let me – not that I, I'm not, like, telling your story for you, but, like, at least say my experience of, like, oh, this is something that's affected me. No, honestly, the only thing I can share that's my story is like my stomach problems. <laughs> Every other struggle in my life is like someone else in our family. Yeah. So being able to a- at least explain w- one like dimension yeah. of me is nice to be able to do. No, yeah. I like personally, I really have no shame about any of it. You shouldn't. I feel like it's actually like, like I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like if someone came up to me and was like you could start drinking and using normally but you would lose like everything you've learned and all the tools you've gained and like all your sober friends and everything like I would never do it like ever because I like it completely changed me as a person in like the best way and like at this point it's like why would I lose all that for like to get trashed and depressed and lonely and lose it like it just it does it wouldn't make sense so you didn't used to feel that way no (laughs) like you used to make fun of AA and be like I'll never I hated AA (laughs) like because I went to my first rehab when I was 18 I was a freshman in high school so I was 14 yeah you were 18 I was really young and I was not ready to get sober you were 18 because you were in the adolescent yes yes I was in the adolescent unit um (laughs) yeah I also do you want yeah I would like send mom and dad essays of like why AA is a cult and like (laughs) (laughs) I I just had no I didn't know it wasn't that I didn't have an interest in being sober it's that I really didn't think I could do it like I didn't believe in myself in that way did you also not think you did you convince yourself you weren't like it was something that you could just do on your own because you used to tell me like (laughs) like like were you just telling me what you wanted me to think or did you actually believe that you were just young and stupid and like could use normally I think deep down I always knew that wasn't the case I mean the first time I ever drank in my life I blacked out really Mm -hmm. oh and that was a that's a whole other story that night that night actually changed my life um that had to be in high school it was my freshman year of high school and we were at a party And it was the first time I drank and I was like, as soon as it like hit me, I was like, oh my God, like, I remember thinking like, why don't, why aren't adults drunk all the time? Like if your first time drinking. Yes. I was like, this is the best feeling in the world. Like I feel, I don't have anxiety. I'm like talking to whoever it was. And alcohol wasn't even like your drug of choice. Well, towards the the end, end, it actually, because I always thought like. I can't do drugs, but maybe I could drink. Yeah. And that held me back from getting sober for a while because I had like those reservations. And then when I finally was like, okay, let me just not do drugs and drink, I did become an alcoholic because I didn't have the other things. Yeah. So for me, it's like 
I I'll become addicted to anything that feels good. And then I did end up even yoga. Tra- <laughs> yeah. No, I'm addicted to working out like and dad too. Like he's addicted to tennis. Like Well, that's where yeah. I get it from. Yeah. Cuz our dad has 35 years sober. Yeah, at something this point. like that. Yeah. So I it and I do and there's other people in our family that are sober. I definitely believe that it's like a genetic thing as well. But like predisposed to just like yeah, having like, an addictive person. We just, me and dad just have that personality of like, yeah. if it feels good, like I'm going to do it all and be time. obsessed with it and yeah. like never stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. And I'm like that with like everything. Yeah. And it's like, a that's like something I think I'll always have to deal with because it's like my personality. But um, it's like using it for healthy habits. Right. Maybe. And like, just like noticing it and like, being um aware of it and trying to find some balance even though it's really hard sometimes but it's been a lot easier in the past few years to like notice it and be like okay this is becoming out of hand let me like talk about it in therapy talk about it with my sponsor because if I keep it in then it it really becomes a thing like well I bet in the past you tell me, but like, it's almost like you didn't want to face it where now you're like, I'm just going to face it like right away. Kind yeah. Of thing. And I believe in myself now, you know. Oh, I'm Allie. I believe yeah. in you. Like, I know I can, I can do it. What are you now? Shit. Almost three years? Yeah. In April? In June. Why did I think April? Well, we Maybe also in the past had that was April. <laughs> yeah. The, I had a relapse after three years and that my old sobriety date was April. Oh. Okay, so I'm. I remember. Yeah, my new one is June. Okay, so how did you go from AA is stupid to <laughs> now I'm gonna actually give this a shot? Like I've heard this. Story, yeah. But. So most of like eighteen to twenty, like lower twenties, was me. I would have like these moments of like I need help, and I would go to mom and dad. Um. But as soon as I would get to rehab, I'd be like, why the fuck did I do that? I'm like, freak out and be like, wait, I cannot be sober. What What was I Cannot thinking? be sober or don't want to be here? Both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I here? Because when I leave, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> why am I here? And then you're like stuck there and they try to extend you. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It's, it was just like, yeah, I would just freak out as soon as I got there. And um, I also was so extremely afraid of being uncomfortable and like a big part of AA when you get there is like getting a sponsor calling people meeting new people at every meeting like like sharing I couldn't even get a manicure without taking a Xanax like I couldn't even talk to the manicure person. to be fair when I've been in an AA meeting with Mal she literally has a panic attack before speaking well that's because it's my anniversary when you come and I do get nervous but like I but like I walk through the fear now yeah I was without using yeah and I was I didn't think I was capable of doing any of these things without drugs or alcohol when I was younger okay so then when were you finally like so I went to rehab I went one or two times before you finally actually were sober because both times you went Three. to rehab, you kind of started using almost right away, right? After? Yeah. So this the la- the fi- the time I finally like got it, I had just gotten out of Mountainside, which is a rehab in Connecticut. Um, this was in 2017, and I relapsed pretty quickly after I came back to the city. I graduated I from college sober. and came home, and you went to rehab. Okay, so 2018. Yeah. Because then I remember being at work and getting a call from you. You were going on dates and you oh, called that me. Was a bad, bad time. <laughs> I called you or you called me during Also addicted the date. to men. <laughs> <laughs> Love addiction too. <laughs> and validation. Yeah, um, that's a big one. Okay, we'll move into that after. Yeah. But I remember you went to rehab when I got out of college and I was at work in like 2019. It must have been honestly way after. After you, I thought you were sober for a little right. while. And I remember literally being at the PR agency at my desk and you called me, I think, or I called you and you were at a date and it was loud. And I just knew you were drunk. Yeah. Like in my <laughs> soul. And then I, I like my heart dropped. And I think I texted oh. you. I think I texted you like, Mal, I know you're drunk. And you were like, yeah. And that was <laughs> you, like- or you just said, I'm sorry. And then that night you called me. 
also knew you were drunk and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then you convinced me that. Oh, it's okay. Then you convinced me that like. I was really good at that. It's a thing <laughs> and that you can just drink and not do other things and that your therapist like also said oh that you could only drink. And I was like. Marissa's, I'm going to send this to her because she never said that. <laughs> And I remember talking to Ethan or Greg and I was like, I feel like I should tell mom. It was finally where I was mature enough where I understood yeah. that like maybe that wasn't true. Where when I was right. younger, I listened to whatever you said. Right, right, right. And I was like, do I tell mom and dad and like betray her trust and she goes to rehab or – and also like crush them? Right. Or do I just like Let keep this – yeah. yeah. I ended up telling them. Yeah. Eventually. But like either way, I needed it. I – do you think I needed to do that? I, I did let it happen. play out. Yeah. I think I think I didn't tell them until after I went to your apartment and you were literally using whippets in front of my face. Oh my and god, like, that was a bad. I'll never. That was that's one of my like worst. Do you remember that points? Yeah, because I feel like we're jumping around where no one could follow, I know. but like we know what we're talking about. So should we should we go back to? Well, okay, we're in 2018. Whatever you went to rehab, you came out. You were still drinking and stuff, and then it just kept escalating and escalating. Yeah, like I and I was in IOP, which is outpatient. You go during the day, and I had met my best friend, who's still my best friend, at Mountainside, and she had stayed sober this whole time. Um, and for some reason, even though Liz, yeah, even though I was still like really not being a good friend and not sober, she like never gave up on me and like always was checking on like she was she's just like the best person I've ever she met, was honestly. like the only person too at that time besides me that you were like like I feel like you started isolating yourself yeah that and Jeff that's it yeah but Jeff is I've known since my first rehab and he's still sober so he's he was always a big part of your recovery yeah and I was in IOP I decided it was a great idea to move someone into my apartment that I met at IOP a guy who had like three days off heroin um dylan do you remember dylan he was really young what are you talking about i'm thinking when you lived with dan it was me and dan had just broken up oh i broke up with my ex-fiance so i could move in a 22 year old who was three days off heroin did i know that i don't think i so. don't remember that i probably wouldn't tell you that i don't think i would tell you that okay cool <laughs> <laughs> Now it's okay because I'm doing well. But like at the time, you. I feel like I was one of the only people that you were talking to. Yeah, but there was always certain things. That, that you were like, let's just not tell her yeah, that. Like there's a bunch of things that I'm like, she doesn't need to know. Yeah. Um, because you were always like the person, like even if when I didn't want to do it for myself, like I would want to do it for you. I feel like I knew that too. That's why I never wanted to like betray your trust because I was like. Yeah, like I always, I like you know I love you so much, obviously, <laughs> and I like would feel so shameful and like I always wanted to be like a good example for you. So I, but you were also like one of my only people because I like had lost all my friends. Um, so it was hard because I like didn't want to hurt you. So I think I there were definitely some things I just wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I moved in this guy into my apartment. We're both using it again within like a day. Was he using heroin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't ask any more questions. <laughs> no. Um, I thought that was the one thing you never did. No, that's not true. But it led me to my bottom. I'm going to start having Mal on the podcast at all times. <laughs> she only tells me stuff on the mic. Um... Yeah, You're fucking lying to it me was right now. A really bad month. Like, mom and dad, don't listen to this, please. I'm gonna have to like put a disclaimer. Yeah. Um, it got really dark, and then I just remember Liz texted me one day and was like, "Do you want to go to this AA meeting with me?" And finally, I just remember like looking in the mirror and being like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, I was so done. I was like, either at this point, I'm gonna end up like dying because I like hated myself that much, or like I need to finally be willing to do AA and like give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll die. Yeah. But I finally had a moment of like, I need to actually try this because I never really tried it. Um, I would like sit in the back, not talk to any. Like I didn't. But what was like the motivator? Because I imagine when you're in that spot, like you probably do have a voice in your head that's like, just die. 
Yeah, but I actually, with all everything I've been through, I never actually wanted had like real suicide. I because my thing was like, why would I commit suicide if I could just get high? Really though, <laughs> no, but, like, but like you said once, I remember. I'll never forget in name like an anniversary meeting. You said I like never wanted to do it, and I just thought, okay, I'm either gonna like I'm gonna try it, and if I don't, if it doesn't work, I'll drink myself to death. Right. Like maybe not intentionally, just like but I would do. I would die while feeling good, right? Right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I snorted. <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> that day, like, was a nightmare. By the way, he wouldn't leave my apartment. I had to call the police. I remember, like, I remember the name. I remember you with we you were rem- with the wrong guy. Young guy, just don't like real. Maybe I blocked it out. Yeah, or it was just short period of time. It was a very remember. short period of time, and whatever I got him out of my apartment and from and then also a few weeks before that was like the whippet situation where where I came over you came over for those of you who who don't know because it's a random drug it's like nitrous you put them in the balloons um it's like laughing gas from the dentist and I'm very addicted to it like which is rare right yeah I've met a few other people but it is rare and I will sit there and blow up those balloons for like a full week at a time. Because it lasts like 30 seconds. Yeah, you just have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And like it's compulsive and it, you feel it like kills all your, you, it's horrible. It's disgusting. Um, But you, we had made plans. I had already canceled on you. I was in the middle of a binge. And when you're, when I'm doing them, like I really cannot stop until I'm like disgusted. That's like the only, I think, experience I've had other than like seeing you in the hospital and stuff where I actually witnessed like. Yeah, because I oh, I would never be around you when I was doing that. Which, wait, side note. What do you want, coffee? Um, When I watched the first episode of Euphoria, I texted you. I never watched another episode again because the first scene is literally Zendaya using and she's like in the bathroom crying using and then her little sister knocks on the door oh, no. and she like covers actually. it all up and I was like I can't watch this yeah like this is literally mouth and another thing that was going on at that time that really brought me to my bottom was what I said before which I've never told you what? that I was like a, a I cam know, girl I don't know what that means <laughs> do I want to like, like an only fans only fans didn't exist yet but like what it used vibe? to be is like you get on camera live oh a cam like webcam i used to webcam and get money yeah and i did that for a really long time How, and i was what's addic- a really long i was time? addicted to that too oh. and i like would f- get really grossed out with myself and throw away all the camming equipment and then go buy it again like it was like a re- like addicted to like the sound that it would make when money came in like the validation from all these men like pay you know it was like and I would always be high while I was doing it and it I was really addicted like those two things were very intertwined yeah um high on what benzos oh the what I know yeah yeah like sometimes ketamine random um Always benzos was a constant though, since I was like what eight. Yeah, that's like what I, I always know, knew was getting my story, but oh. with like how I got into pills and everything. But we could back up. <laughs> you give a little summary. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you said the first time you ever drank, right? So then what? But drinking was not my main thing. I always struggled with panic attack disorder. I would like from as early as I can remember, like. Uh, get these horrible panic attacks where I felt like I couldn't breathe and I thought I was dying and I'd like beg my parents to call an ambulance and I'd have to sleep in their room. This stuff I knew because yeah. it, it felt a little more innocent, I guess. Right. Like <laughs> just like panic and it made me struggle in school a lot. Um, and then I was put on stimulants when I was very young. I think I was like seven or eight. Meaning like Adderall? Yeah. I was given an anti-anxiety medication when I was young for the panic attacks. And when I got to high school and someone was selling Xanax and I took it, I was like, oh, my God, this is the pill that used to I used to be like, I remember taking it for the first time when I was so young. And I was like, why can't I just take this like every day? So I did. (laughs) And (laughs) uh, (laughs) I was very addicted to Xanax in high school. I ended up in detox like during my high school graduation. Um, because I didn't realize how sick you get when you stop it. And my dealer had 
ran out for the first time and I was so sick and mom and dad had to take me to the hospital. Um, I remember that. That was my first tip into something's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Because I was in like eighth grade or something. Yeah, eighth grade. Because then when I went into high school, you went to rehab. Right. Oh, you went to the hospital. I had visited. Yeah, you did. You also found out like your best friend hooked up with your boyfriend. Up to my boyfriend. Yeah, while you were in the hospital, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Then that I started went. Started my trust issues. <laughs> yeah, then I went to sleepaway camp, and you didn't come on visiting day because you were in rehab, but I wasn't told why. Okay. And then I got home. Literally, I will never forget. Mom and dad won't either. I get off the camp buses, and my first question is, "Where's Mal?" Yeah. And they go, "We'll talk about it when we get home." And we get in the car, and I go, "Is she in rehab?" And they looked at each other dumbfounded because we had never spoken about it before. So like, weird. no one really know. told me why you were in the hospital. Yeah. I guess. Like, I think I just took context clues. Right. There was one point where they had you packed up to go to and rehab. and you, you guys, this was so funny. I literally. Before, before the sleepaway camp thing where she finally went to rehab. This was an attempt to take me to rehab. Yeah. And I. <laughs> refused to get out of the car my dad was like pulling my feet and I was holding <laughs> onto the door <laughs> like, I'm not fucking getting out of this car so no one told and me. if you make me get out of this car I'm running away so they just took me home yeah and I all I saw was you were packed up to go somewhere and then you came back home but again they were probably going to talk to me about it after but never needed to right so I just took context clues and literally first words out of my mouth when I got in the car after camp was like is she in rehab and they were like what the fuck dumbfounded they'll never none of us will forget yeah and then that was the beginning of like I didn't speak to you for I don't know most of your time there and then I finally like you were mad at me I forget about yeah I don't know why well I was in the halfway house in Florida when you're young you just feel like it's an act of like choice yeah no you know what I mean yeah. Like you're like, well, why couldn't you just stop? Right. Well, also, I think I, I probably didn't really understand my emotions at the time, but I was like, wanted you to be there. I was going to high school. Like, no, I was yeah. like, oh, because I remember feeling like, wait, she told me everyone smokes weed in high school. She <laughs> told me this. She told me that. And now I'm going to high school, like so confused, like oh, what's yeah. normal. Yeah. And then while you were in rehab, I would get mad at all my friends for smoking weed. I remember this. Like a psycho. <laughs> I think I was just so if confused. Only it was just the weed, I would have been fine. I think. Yeah. Actually, no. Remember how much you used to smoke? Yeah, you were oh smoking in the backyard. You it. had like seances. Remember? It felt like, like you Remem- must be on yeah. the blanket in the backyard. Remember when we went to Cape Cod, and I was like in a big weed phase, and I you I gave you gummies. Is that when I at Subway? Like, yeah. Couldn't tell them you the sandwiches. Could not remember that. That wasn't before order. rehab, though. That was like. Uh, this was like in my 20s still yeah. struggling to get sober yeah, but that was like one of the post I was old enough to take when gummies I, when I, when I was con- like no that was when I, I that was one of the times I convinced you guys that I could just smoke oh yeah it. we had full-on times like recently in Amsterdam like six years ago where we were like taking gummies yeah and like I was because I'm a very were okay. addicts are very man, like manipulative the, and persuasive yeah. like if we want to use we'll convince you it's okay no, no, well, you no. said it was just weed. Like, right. it was just gummies and some people, like, it's like California sober or No, whatever. people, like, there people are can convince you. People that can do that, but I could never do that with weed. I, like, get, I get so addicted to it. Um, it becomes my whole personality. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Well, it sounds like anything you're addicted oh, to. Oh, yeah. So, that. back to the whippets. Yeah. <laughs> I had never used – well, I had – always of course been on stuff around you but stuff you oh, oh, oh. couldn't like see like like a weed gummy a wine no, I've been in a million times no no, no of you. course but yeah. I'm saying actively seeing you use right. something like wine weed gummies something that like we thought was like a bonding sisterly funny right. moment like but a way this moment was not that was I opening for me because you were only coming over for an hour or two and I literally could not stop. Like yeah. I was going in the bathroom and doing it. But and like then I, I fully tried knew to get you to do it. Yeah. Which is the first time I've ever with like something besides weed. Yeah. Like that was like, what the fuck was that? Like I was like traumatized by myself that I like asked you to you with me well because I said no yeah you were like what the fuck because in the past I was so young that like if you told me this is eat this gummy it'll be fun 
or like wine, but I'm that's a really good sister. No, okay? you are. But that's also like normal. Like let's drink yeah. wine. I'm talking like I was already in college when right, this, like right, it right. wasn't like weird for me to do a gummy or drink wine, but it was yeah. like this was after I already was contemplating, do I tell mom and dad she's drinking on dates? Right. And now I'm like, it was in the midst of this, like I was having an internal struggle of like, she needs to be able to confide in me and I need to not just like. Yeah. Run to mom. Yeah. Yeah. But that I was sitting there with you and you were telling me that your therapist said it was okay. And this was the first time in my life where I was like, wait, I don't believe everything my sister says anymore. Like, it was a weird moment for me. And like, I oh, I'm growing that. up. I could feel that too. It was weird. And then, like, you kept – I literally heard it because it's, like, audible. It's really loud, yeah. She was doing them on the couch, and then you would try, like, not to, and then you would, like, go to the bathroom, and I, I would literally stop. hear it. Yeah. And, and that was when I was like, oh, I do need – that's when I was like, I need to tell mom and dad. Yeah. And then you – That was eye-opening for me because it had gotten to the point where – I was literally doing it right in front of you because I couldn't stop. And you tried, you were trying to sell me on it so that you could keep doing it. Yeah. That's the only reason. And I kept saying no, which is like crazy. Cause like, no, at that point, I was old enough. It was post college. Didn't I have you to a top of a whipped cream can once? Yes, in the, in the in stop and lot? shop or Pathmark, whatever it was, parking lot. Oh my God. That was, again, I was like in college, I think. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't like 10. But still, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I did it. I forgot about that. <laughs> the whipped cream can. Yeah. I was very, those, I was very addicted to whipped cream. It's as bad. I do just want to say, you are literally the best sister in the entire oh. world. And I know it sounds like you. <laughs> I sound like, I'm not hyping like myself up right now. Turn me into an addict or something. But like, you were, you were there for me so much. She was like a second mom. Thank literally you. and best I friend do feel like that, but then I, I like there were times obviously with my addiction where I couldn't show up but I really tried to my hardest but you always like acknowledged it yeah. like do you know what I mean like there's a lot of situations in my life where it's like trying people trying to defend themselves or yeah. gaslight me or make me think defending this <laughs> where, where you would go to rehab and literally be like you would write me letters or I would talk to your therapist and it was like Jen's the person I disappointed the most and like I'm so sorry I drove under the influence like things like you like apologized every single time and like it was so clear when you were using even when you were using you were trying to be a good sister to me yeah I really always was trying and like then when you weren't you acknowledged every little thing and like like you said, I was like the reason you got sober a lot of the times like I like felt that like you were a really good sister like, because all we're saying is, like, I'm she tried crying. to get me to do my bits, but, like, I wouldn't have been so supportive in trying to help you if you weren't. Yeah, no. like I If you were, like, destroying my life. I was very aware of the things I did that weren't right. And like, it's I weird how little I do them. resent you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, because a lot of times with siblings of addicts, it's, like, very hard like a lot of my friends don't have these relationships with their siblings because it also affects the parents so then as the sibling and it you fucks up your life you kind of want to be like fuck you now my parents are no, like depressed so many dynamics with that yeah. that it like really fucks up relationships with siblings right and like me and greg definitely had a harder time i think yeah. than me and you well because you were you were always open with me and it kind yeah. of, i think it made you guys more distant where it kind of yeah and i was such an asshole to him <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know Where why. me, for some reason, you had, like, a soft I just spot. always felt, like, so protective over you. I'm not sure why, but. Okay, so what were we up to? Then you go These to. These are, like, all my little moments of, like, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck am right. I doing? What the fuck am I doing? This is, I'm really getting lower and lower. <laughs> like, right. I'm in my apartment all day getting fucked up, webcamming. I, like, wouldn't see the sun. Like, it was, I had no friends left. I just was like, my life was a joke. It's like really crazy the comparison to now. And I never thought you'd get to a point where you have like such a close knit group of friends. Never. Because I didn't have any friends left from growing up. You had amazing friends like growing up and everything. It was just when it got dark. I couldn't see them. Well, they also didn't understand. Like as much as you had really good friends that like tried to understand and would have stood by you. But like you probably felt so much shame. Like Yeah. And like. Where now it's people who it's get it. It's weird because I've only known my, like, current group of friends for, like, 
five, six years now, but it's kind of a long time. Yeah. But like, like my rumble friends, I feel so close to, and it's like two years. But it's like when you're like coming together to like save each other's lives, it's yeah, like it's wild. the connection is like so deep. Like, like we're literally like in each other's lives to keep each other sober. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously it becomes more than that, but we really have it's like such a like deep bond can you bust kind of like a trauma bond i get not really though but it probably starts that way yeah like can you bust the stereotype that you thought aa was and why you hated it and how now like yeah like if your past self saw you now with a group of friends you'd be like what am i with like jesus loving freaks like right no no you're actually like cool new york city girls that you would have been friends with a million percent like i mean i can only i mean no i can speak for how aa is different everywhere right like if you go, if you live in the middle of nowhere and you go to AA, like it might be what what you picture, like a basement with old men. Remember when you had a stalker in Florida? Oh my God, that was such. We're I gonna need a part two. Of I my know. Crazy story. My life is actually insane. No, there's so much we haven't touched <laughs> on because when I'm on Xanax, it's Xanax benzos take away your fear and your anxiety, so you will literally do anything. I would have robbed a bank and like not had anxiety about it. Like, so I would just do like crazy shit because I couldn't feel that fear. And it wasn't just a normal dose of like, oh, I was up to 15 milligrams. I don't know. I had the longest taper in detox. If I were to take one for like a normal reason, it'd be what, like one milligram? Yes. Maybe 0.5. Oh, (laughs) okay. Got it. (laughs) I built it up. So I literally had no fear. So I did a lot of crazy shit that I don't know how I'm still alive. Like, yeah. Okay, so then finally you had a rock bottom. You said, let. So, what? You went to AI and you were like, okay, I'm actually open to it now. I'm going to do this to the best, fullest of my ability. Wow. Because there has to be like a better way. And like, I had been to rehab a bunch, and every friend that I made from rehab that was still sober, it was through AA. And that's just from my experience. I know there's other ways to get sober, but this is a way I knew that worked. And that I never really tried. And I tried a lot. I tried harm reduction. I tried DB, a whole DBT course. I did the whole yoga spiritual. Like I, uh, you tried, other, I tried I stuff. I tried smart recovery. You don't need to be totally abstinent for that. And I need to be. Um, so I was like, okay, if, if I've like seen the results in other people with this program, why what am like why am I still feeling this way like if I haven't given it a fair shot Mm -hmm. you know so I yeah initially like my excuses would be like the whole god thing which is like it's not a religious program it just asks you to acknowledge that there is something bigger than yourself out there which you can get behind like you like spiritual the universe it could like there's it doesn't tell you it has to be any type of god yeah like um and and you know uh, yeah I would just the big book's like very old and I would pick that apart because it was written by a man and it only says men in it like I would find anything looking for things yeah yeah. um but yeah so I go to AA in the city it's amazing there's so many young people's meetings I was literally Liz took me to a meeting and it was like all people my age like cool people like creatives like finance people like just like normal people and I was and I had only been to AA meetings in like around the rehabs I went to in the middle of nowhere and it was not like that yeah. so um I got a sponsor the first day I called her every single day I started getting women's phone numbers I would call them I like slowly started making friends I slowly started being able to share in meetings um I started doing the steps and like literally so quickly too my life completely changed yeah like I went from like wanting to kill myself with drugs and hating myself. And the self love is always a work in progress, but it's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. And like, but the way that I hated myself, I can't even put into words. Like, I thought I, I was that so much. Piece of shit. Like, that like makes me want to cry mm. because somehow. It, we're only talking about like your darkest moments but somehow like I've still always looked up to you like I think you're literally Aww. the coolest person ever oh my god Jenny no I'm so when you've hated yourself it like makes me so upset 
Yeah. You know, when you just wish someone could like see themselves, yeah. how yeah, you do. Yeah, that's how I feel with my clients. That's how I feel with like, yeah. which is another podcast, like you're eating stuff. I'm just like, she's literally stunning. Like, oh. why is she always obsessing over whatever? That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, that comes with addiction though. Like a lot of fem- women in recovery, like also have eating disorders mm-hmm. and like, and like sex and love stuff. And um, it's usually when you're an addict, it's not just one thing. Yeah. It's like anything to like fill that void in you that you just really feel like something's missing and you just like don't like yourself and I've always felt that going back (laughs) to I didn't explain the night that I blacked out my first night drinking but it it was it has a big part to do with why I hated myself so much oh I don't I did I never tell you this I I got really drunk blackout I had hooked up with a bunch of guys older guys what's hooked up (laughs) okay (laughs) i blacked out i don't remember but apparently oh you don't know this for sure like you don't remember i don't remember and like honestly with the state i was in and from the pictures and everything like nowadays it would be probably like they'd assault but back then that wasn't a thing you know like it was way different i thought this was a college dorm that it has oh. also a call there oh, okay i have a lot of trauma yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway all these older guys had older girlfriends and that's why they all hated you yeah i was tortured I, I was tortured in high school i was called a slut in the hallway every day i was called fat every day i was called ugly i was called disgusting i was spit on one of the girls poured peed in a cup and poured it on me in front of everyone i took on I had one from like an innocent little girl to like overnight yeah like all of a sudden I was like the school pariah like slut like and then you just like went with it I just went with it I started like hanging out with the bad kids smoking cigarettes outside of the high school like doing drugs every day with them like I was like okay I'll be that (laughs) like well everyone's telling me I'm the same yeah so you think you are yeah and like it was very shaming back then, and the scare. It's and crazy the worst that it continued. I didn't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I don't know if I was taken it. I mean, I was taken advantage of, obviously, obviously. but I, I don't remember. I woke up and everyone was telling me all these things. That's your first night ever used drinking. Yes. I should have known from that. <laughs> like you no, should not that, drink. You're so young though. Yeah. I wouldn't fucking know. Right. Okay, so skipping ahead to you finally tried it, it finally worked, and then you were what two years sober? Three. We got to three. Mm-hmm. We got to three years, and what was that relapse like? And now you're at two years, right? Almost three. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. You're almost back at what I lost. Yeah. And I got my job back. I yeah. So when I relapsed this time was different because. It used to be me like convincing myself, oh, like you were young, like you could do it now. When I relapsed, I knew I couldn't do it. <laughs> like it was like, okay, let me go get fucked. Like it wasn't because I thought I could be normal. I like knew it. I know I cannot be normal. I mean, like who goes to detox at 17? Like, yeah. And to me, all your, re- I didn't know all the details, but what? I thought you were like throwing up. <laughs> you. <laughs> um to me all your relapsed lapses be careful of the cord all the all your relapses looked the same like from my perspective it was like she's sober and then one night she does it all alone in her apartment and calls someone right I don't ever last more than like a day which is extremely scary though for me because I'm like what if next time she relapses and does it all in one night like it it's you can't. How many times can you be lucky and call someone and they get there and you're fine? Right, because that's happened a lot. It's like I feel like you're almost out of lives, and that's why this I last am. time I was like, I'm. I was able to handle it better. Yeah, it wasn't like me. Like when I was it young, was still shocking because I'd had never built up that much time before. It was like, oh, you were finally good, and yet you had the same exact relapse story from like what I knew. Especially when you have a lot of time, I will say, you're, like, making up for lost time, it feels like. Like, binging. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you also, you said you knew that, like, you were going to get sober again, so you were, like, yeah, getting it all in. Or I like, knew I was going to get sober again, which isn't always a promise, and 
I shouldn't have thought people don't come back people die like yeah. especially when they haven't used in a while and then they use again like I that was something I just assumed that I would be able to do but that's not the case yeah for a lot of people and I don't think it would be for me again that's my biggest fear is like how many lives can you like this is where I start to cry this is the one thought that I always have that makes me cry oh I don't want to cry. Fuck this. <laughs> I had enough yesterday. <laughs> That's like the one thing that will make me cry that I can't handle thinking about. So yeah. let's just move on. Okay. And that's like the other thing, like I would be dishonest to say it will never happen again. I know. I can't say that. I don't fucking know. I Because you're also really young. <laughs> Well, I know you don't feel it because biological clock or whatever, but you're still. I do feel in like an extremely different place than where I was at last time. I was in a horrible relationship. Yeah. Um, This was your you did one year off of love and sex and dating. Yeah. I just started dating again two months ago. I took a full year off and it changed my life. Is it triggering any old patterns? No, because that's the story I wanted to tell you when I got here. Oh, yeah. Finish with the happy story. Oh, so now she's now she's almost three years so sober and working at a sober home as a case manager. Yeah. Which she helps. Other people get sober. Great. Um, <laughs> and I have the best, best friends in the whole fucking world. Like, So she just started dating again after a really tra- traumatic dating story, which we can tell another time. Yeah. I basically just got cheated on in like the worst way. Um, and... It was bad for a while, though. Uh, it had a big part to do with my relapse. And yet she stayed sober after, I think. And to yeah, my I, fucking knowledge. No, when, we, when I found out he cheated on me in this apartment. Literally right here. Right there. We were like, oh, let's just look up. Wait, she was telling me a story about how we, I was like, really? There were no signs like that it was ending or whatever. Yeah. And she was like, well, there was this one time that I like looked at his phone and he was texting someone named... You bitch. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and I was like, wait, ha, ha, ha. And she was like, yeah, he said it was someone from work. And I'm like, ha, 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 let's look up if he's following anyone with that yeah. name. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, no big deal. And so we look, we literally, the first fucking thing that comes up in followers is this person. And the first picture is them kissing. And this was like a month after they broke up. So Mal collapsed right here. I collapsed. So that's a whole fucking thing. But then a year. And, yeah, he had known her for, I'd seen that name. Like, yeah, he was, he was a scumbag. So then for a year after that, for like six months or more, you were recovering from that. Yeah. So anyway, for a year after that, she, you didn't do uh, dating. And now you're back. So tell us. You even flirt with someone. Like, I crazy. literally did not just look at a man. So tell us the story of the red flag and then my computer's dying. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I realized I had always gotten into relationships really fast without even really thinking about it because I was so scared to be alone. And so I knew I needed to be alone, like to see, to like debunk that myth and stop choosing the wrong people just because they're available. Um, And I had the best year. And like, I like being alone. Like, I'm like, so anyway, I started dating again recently and, ugh. What if he sees this because he follows me? You think he's going to be 50 minutes into this episode? No, you're right. He doesn't like me that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could just give cliff notes. You saw a red flag. Cliff notes. I saw a red flag. That normally you would have. started, yeah, yeah, that normally I'd be like, well, whatever. Like, it's a, because it was, it's a, it was like a big high. It was a really intense connection, like right from the jump. And like, you know, when you like meet someone and it's like instant and like you're obsessed with each other. And I, I, something was, I was not comfortable with something and I voiced it and it was something he wasn't willing to change right away. So I ended it and I said, I think it's better if we don't speak. Can you tell me what, or you don't want to say no, it on yeah, this podcast? We start, like I'm dating casually right now. Like I'm not jump, looking to jump into anything. Um, and we were both really open with each other that we were casual with other people as well and he was but then it came out that one of the people he's casual with he's been seeing for seven months now oh oh so you felt like the other I was just felt like that isn't casual yeah seven months is a long time and if you are he is open to a relationship eventually he said that to me but it might not be with me wait I'm so proud of you 
yeah why would i keep seeing him and getting closer to him when he could end up with someone else Well, in the past it would have been like a high for you to be trying like, to win him over yeah like fuck that <gasps> yeah this is a breakthrough That's i know kind of crazy my therapist said the same thing okay so she's almost three years sober and she broke that habit okay my computer is gonna die but i love you so much i love you Okay. That's so good. Okay. Love you. Bye.